Well, it was an interesting game, wasn't it? Uh, France on the scoreboard completely pummeled Australia. But I would say that the scoreboard is maybe hiding a greater context of the game. Obviously, France were a powerhouse. A uh, huge amount of their starters played and they looked completely unstoppable at points. They were a bit rocky in the first half, didn't look as dominant as they usually do. But in the second half, they really cemented why they are one of the top teams in this World Cup. I mean, unbelievable play. They've set their counter-attack is so effective. They know where the, the holes are in the defence. Their heads up, they sniff it out. Pennard is just sensational on the wing. The other wing, I forget his name. I know he's a great sevens player. He's sensational as well. I mean, <laughs> I mean, you could go through a lot of the positions on the French team that are sensational. Dupont's probably like a generational player in terms of scrum half. Looking at Australia, though, and I think there's some positives to, for, to take from their play. I, I feel like the experiments that Eddie Jones is doing with the team, obviously he's been criticised for taking one fly half in the very experienced, inexperienced fly half in Carter Gordon. But I think he's playing well. I think Tate McDermott's playing well. I think the experiments that Eddie is doing with his team, they're kind of working. Whereas if you look at the juxtaposition of where Eddie's come from in England... The experiments, they're not really experiments, they're kind of like old rugby covered in new paint, they're not working as much. And it kind of gives Australia a hope to kind of be a bit spicy in this World Cup. Again, they're granted on being on the easy side of the World Cup, so maybe they could surprise some people and get to a certain stage in the knockout stages. But I think there's a lot of positives to take. If you look at the first half, just at the first half, Australia were very competitive they were only short of a few points just because of a couple of missed kicks, a knock-on here, an accidental penalty here. They're not far off in reality. They've gone for a younger squad. The team is quite young. And it means that they've got time to kind of warm themselves up coming up into the World Cup with the pool that they're in. And they could surprise a lot of people if they just keep kind of experimenting and trying to find the true answer of how they can play rugby. I don't feel the same way about England. I don't really feel the same way about Wales. Australia have a chance to utilise the opportunity in the, uh, in, in the half of the World Cup that they have. It almost feels like Australia are kind of given the freedom to play what they're seeing in front of them, which other teams that are in a similar position to them aren't. I'll give you an example. On some of the counter-attacks, the play was uh, breaking down. It felt like they had an opportunity in their head to think what they want to do in attack in terms of kicking to a certain position or run a certain line, rather than trying to kind of bake an attack. You know, they were trying to they were trying to actively cook and s smell the recipe of their attack rather than having a set recipe that they knew or they would think would work, if that makes sense. It was a bit more like heads up, seeing what's going on. And that's very positive because a note that I made in, in general in rugby these days is I think creativity and seeing what's in front of you and reacting to differences in certain situations rather than having a script really benefits a lot of teams. I mean, look at South Africa, Manny Libok at uh, fly half. He's a very inventive player, sees what's in front of him, gets rewarded for it. Dupont for France, same deal, sees what's in front of him, reacts to that rather than, right, we're always gonna play it to the fly half or I'm always gonna run it after the third or fourth play. It's all like random chaos that is based off of decision-making at the time. And I think if Australia keep playing this way, there's, you know, they, they, could, they could surprise a lot of people. However, the score does suggest that there is a chasm between these two teams in terms of quality. And that's to be expected, right? This is France's, this is their opportunity to win the whole thing. And it has been for a good year and a half now. Uh, I think ever since Sean Edwards took over as defensive coach, their game has put themselves to another level where they're competing with the best teams in the world. So Australia haven't been that way for a long time and, you know, therefore they don't have the momentum coming up. But at least they're trying something. At least they're trying stuff that's working for other teams. So I think Jalabert is a great fly half and he plays really, really close to what... I can never get his name right. Nomatic? I don't know. Roman Nomatic? Sorry, arrogant Englishman. Don't know how to pronounce, pronounce French names. I'm going to call him Pneumatic as in like a pneumatic drill. And that's just what you're going to have to get used to me still calling him. He's very similar to him, okay? He plays on the front line, very aggressive rugby. You've also got Antoine Hastoy on the bench who plays a very different kind of rugby. 
And I think this is really going to benefit France. It, it would have been the same if uh, Nomatic hadn't gotten injured. But it means that France have a real juxtaposition in two different fly halves. They can play di very different styles of rugby. And it's kind of like having, back in the old days, having Johnny Sexton and Ronan Nagara in your team. You can start off with uh, your playmaking, uh, you know, eye-grabbing fly half that's going to uh, attack, attack, attack. And you get later on into the game, and if it's too chaotic, you need someone just to kind of level the playing field a little bit, just get the bring the energy down. That's when you can bring Hastoy on, and he can just take control over a game because he's a perfect game manager. So that's a real benefit for France, that not a lot of the top-tier teams have that ability to change their gameplay that quickly, you know, in terms of how they want to play and win a game. Talking about Australia's penalties, I think that's another thing to mention. There's too many of them. I think they mentioned in the commentary in the Rugby Championship that they averaged about 12 penalties per game. It's too high. They were at 10 penalties and they were in at like 50 minutes into the game. So you can't... When you're a team that's kind of vying and trying to get in the mix in terms of being taken seriously, you can't have that many penalties. It's a discipline issue. It's something that needs to be sorted out. Um, and I think if they did that and they just tightened things up a little bit, then they could they could play really dangerous rugby. And yeah, I mean, that's the summary of this game. France, powerhouse, looking strong, nothing wrong with them going straight into this New Zealand game. And boy, that's going to be a hell of an opening game. Uh, and Australia, even though you can see in the score, you're far off France, at least you're creating opportunities. You know, that's better than some teams are doing that are rated to be just as good as you are. You're creating opportunities. You've at least got something to work with. You've at least got a little bit of hope or something that you can bind onto. So... Fair play to you. You're on, this, you're on the easiest side of the World Cup. Let's see what you can do. Rooting for Eddie Jones. Uh, I like him as a coach. He's a bit crazy, uh, but, you know, crazy's good sometimes. But anyway, that's my review of this game. Illuminati can